So this probably isn't my favorite dish, but my mom might beg to differ. Growing up in elementary, she would pack my lunch every day, but on beans and cornbread day, I would beg her, please mom, don't pack my lunch. Let me eat in the cafeteria. So today we're going to make beans and cornbread. All you need is some pinto beans. You're gonna put them in your pot. Mmm. And some water. And you're going to let your beans soak overnight. You're gonna wash them really good, rinse them a couple of times. And so, we're gonna let that set. One thing that you can add to this would be a ham hock whenever you get ready to cook it. You could also add in some onions, some salt and pepper. But one of the reasons why I picked this dish is because growing up, my family was poor, very poor. So my grandmother said, and her sister, I called her sister, my grandmother's passed away. She said, oh, we have beans and cornbread all the time. That's what we grew up on. And uh, they also had something that my grandmother called company. Now, company was only made when company would come over. And it was created with a can of corn, a can of tomatoes, and I think a can of beans. I can't quite remember what my grandmother told me that third ingredient was. But we always knew company was coming because that's what grand great-grandmother would make. While your beans are cooking, you'll want to start your cornbread. So the first thing you'll need is a cup of cornmeal. So I want to find my one cup measuring cup. I don't have one. <laughs> I don't have one. They're all dirty. <laughs> and you're going to use the flat edge of your knife to level it off. You want to make sure it's the flat edge and not the curved edge. That way your measurement is correct. So since I only have a half cup, we're going to do two of these. Whoops. You will also need one cup of all-purpose flour. You'll want to aerate, which means to incorporate air, into your flour. Flour kind of packs down a little bit over time. So you're going to stir it really good to aerate it. Or you can use a sifter. Those are kind of fun. Okay. A fourth a cup of sugar, and I'm pretty sure I have a fourth a cup of sugar. Fourth a cup of sugar. Four teaspoons of baking powder. So, baking powder. Make sure you get baking powder, not baking soda. There is a difference in the two, or four. A half a teaspoon of salt is next. I forgot to tell you to preheat your oven. So you might want to do that before you start. First thing. And I'm really bad at setting timers too. Okay, half a teaspoon of salt. One cup of milk. For this one, we're going to use the liquid measuring cup, which has a spout. And we're going to paracupto, which means we're going to bend over and we're gonna to look to make sure that the meniscus is in the right location. So, and then I need an egg. So we need a fourth of a cup. So I'm going to grease my pan with shortening. It's hydrogenated vegetable oil, basically. I'm going to pour in my batter, making sure that everything was incorporated at the bottom. So if you notice at the bottom, something didn't get stirred in. It is ready for the oven. You'll want to check on your beans periodically, make sure that they're covered in water. When they're finished, about two hours of cooking time, and your cornbread is finished, about 20 minutes of cooking time. You can slice your cornbread up into pieces, put it on top of your beans, and enjoy. This is a great cost-effective recipe. One thing, growing up, they didn't have money, and so a bag of beans was cheap, and some cornmeal, flour, egg, and milk, those were kind of staples back in the day. Um, so beans and cornbread is a go-to, especially on a budget.